So apparently for some unknown reason you guys seem to like these Unity tips and tricks series more than I had ever expected. <laughs> like don't get me wrong though, I'm not complaining at all. It's just surprising to me I guess, but thank you. That's what I kind of want to like end this note on. <laughs> so therefore I decided that in this video we'll take a look at five more tips and tricks you can use while working on your projects with Unity. So with that being said, buckle up, open up Unity Hub and let's get started with this video. Hey guys, it's Sam here and like I said before, we're about to take a look at some more Unity tips and tricks and as you already might know, we do have a Discord server in which you can find over 5,000 like-minded people, which the number is still crazy for me to say out loud. And we in the server are basically all into game development as well, just like you and to join, you can simply click the link in the description and you will be welcomed right away. It's obviously free as well. And before getting into the main topic of this video, I would also like to give a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP and all of our other patrons who have helped making this video come true and helped forging it. Now, with that being said, without further ado, rather, let's get into Unity. So, as you probably already realized, you can view certain game objects icons in the scene window. Like, for instance, you can see a camera icon for your camera object, light for your direction light, and so on. Now, you also have the option to enable these icons, including many more, by enabling gizmos in the game window. And by using gizmos in your game view, you can simply check out which components are being run in front of your camera while you start your game or even through like certain animations and player movements etc like other types of events and obviously gizmos is not only for like icons and the visual part of stuff but it's also for viewing wireframe mesh for a game object you want to check out the geometry and stuff like that so you have a bunch of other features you can actually check out with gizmos and now moving on to number two i know that a lot of people are confused over the functions update fixed update and late update in unity while coding in c sharp it's like what do they even do so if you're part of that group then good because we are about to uncover what they actually really do so i will keep it super simple to begin with you can use void update for pretty much most things like assigning values to properties, input and etc. And you can use fixed update for physics related stuff like applying forces onto a rigid body, moving like a player and stuff like that. And finally, you can use late update for things that need to happen after void update but right before the camera renders. And to be completely honest with you guys, like you don't have to worry, you don't have to feel the need of using these in like a super accurate way all the time, but it's basically just for best practice for more optimal performance. So if you feel like it's still a little confusing and you're not sure which one to use when, it's okay, like don't worry. But it's basically, like I said, best practice and just keep it in the back of your head. Like if you're programming for physics, like you're trying to apply forces to your rigid body player or enemy or whatever it might be, right? then just have it in the back of your head like, oh, okay, let's check out fixed update and see how it performs compared to just void update itself. And of course, additionally, I'm also going to leave some links in the description for all of these facts that I'm trying to give you guys in this video or in these videos rather. So in case you're confused, you don't really have like a clear answer on which one to go for, you can check out the links, you can leave a comment down below and our community will be more than happy to help you, obviously. And now moving on to number three, we are going to generalize this video a little bit and take a look at the larger projects that are published by Unity's demo teams, such as the new 3D game kit, which are often considered as kind of like templates for working on similar games. However, there's actually much more to it. So these projects are not only templates, but they also consist out of multiple scripts that can actually get you started with programming and learning how to code and just kind of like bump you into the right direction. And obviously you also have the wonderful opportunity to check out the source code and all the other assets that are included in the projects and see how they were made. And this seems to be like a super helpful step for many who are just getting started with Unity. And even the team behind the game kit actually have said themselves that they have mainly targeted designers who are not that familiar with coding or basically people that are getting into Unity for the first time. And now at number four, I want to talk about editor scripting for just a little while. And you might already know this, but basically Unity provides you with an external API for building your own custom tools, windows, inspection, 
inspectors like custom inspector windows and these are often used by asset developers to make sure that their tools are easily reachable and also customizable however even if you don't intend to publish your tools that you create for your games publicly you can still make use of a little bit of editor programming in the background and ease the whole process of creating your game editor programming in unity is honestly super simple and very easy to get used to as well and besides there's an entire api thread dedicated just for this subject which you can actually find in the description box of this video i know i'm such a nice guy and beside all that if you work as a team or even solo for the love of like psycho i strongly suggest you to create something custom I've seen so many customers in my freelance days who never created anything like custom in regards to editor and their codes were like over thousand lines like super crazy with like hundreds of fields and <laughs> oh my god was it painful to work with them because they were like hey change this out like I need to change this field and I was I looked through the code I looked through the fields in the inspector and I'm like nope I'm staying out of this like I'm gonna mess something up and now last but not least for number five in this video We all know that the new scriptable render pipeline or the SRP as they also call it is now available with unity 2018 and this is honestly speaking a huge deal because now there's so much more customization for all of us developers and really like whoever uses unity pretty much and additionally unity didn't really stop there they also provided us now with multiple templates to use for our projects like the hdrp the lightweight rp and a few others that we are going to check out and besides they also released an additional like a little cheat sheet i guess you could say which is a little introduction to all of these features and templates that they have released so let's go and check them out 2d and 3d are just as usual for you know different perspective based games we are quite used to them by now so i will just skip boring you with those with info on those but as an additional template we now have 3d with extras which is similar to the 3d template but with the added benefits of post-processing presets and example content and then we also have high-end preview which is for high-end graphics on platforms that support shader model 5.0 basically directx 11 and above this template uses the new high definition render pipeline or hdrp as we also call it and this one is mainly for higher graphical settings and it includes advanced material types and a configurable hybrid lighting architecture and finally we have the lightweight and lightweight vr previews so these are created for focused on performance and projects that primarily use a baked lighting solution this template uses the lightweight rp a single pass forward renderer with the light culling per object so what do these mean i know that this last one might sound a little bit you know confusing but let's simplify so hdrp is basically for console and pc games which aim for higher visual fidelity meanwhile lightweight rp is for mobile games granting greater performance overall but taken from the visual quality and that is pretty much it for this video guys hope you all enjoyed and found this helpful if you did and would like to see more tips and tricks for unity make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to tune for new content and of course we are looking forward to hear more about your favorite tips in the comment section because i do want to like feature you guys in the videos which is in fact going to happen from now on which hasn't really happened before so i'm going to feature your comments which are going to contain obviously the tips and tricks for unity and give you credits for that so that i feature your comment like the entire comment itself on the video or in the video i guess you could say which is basically like a little cool interaction that i want to keep with you guys because that's pretty much what i really value on this channel and in this community so i'm just hoping for the love of psycho once again because that's the only true god that we have that your username is appropriate to pronounce because i really don't want to get demonetized again dad anyway so once again thank you so much for watching i'll be catching you guys in the comment section and in the discord server see you guys peace out have a good one